the Christian Catholic community of, um, of old Europe and, of, and the Western hemisphere eventually. Eventually all, all Hallow's Eve was shortened to Halloween. So the word for Halloween seems to come from that hallow, the concept of hallow, holy. On All Hallows, also known as Saint All Saints Day, November 1st, many churches staged pageants in which participants would dress up either as patron saints or demons. All Souls Day on November 2nd, which is also part of the three-day celebration uh, in Mexico and other parts of Latin America. In Roman Catholicism, November 2nd was a day to commemorate all the departed. Requiem masses are commonly held and many people visit and sometimes decorate graves of loved ones, which we saw in the photo from Sweden. In the New World, as Christianity was imposed on native peoples, indigenous Aztec beliefs merged with the Christian religious calendar to give rise to celebrations containing features drawn from both Christianity and pre-Christian sources. In Mexico, the three-day celebration around October 31st, November 1st, and November 2nd is called Todos Santos, All Saints, also Dia or Dias de la Matos, Day or Days of the Dead. And it is the most important celebration in the Mexican yearly calendar. As we will see, many features drawn from ancient, old, and new world rites and rituals connected to homage paying to the dead are found in Dia de los Matos, beliefs and practices. Day of the Dead celebrations occur in every village, town and city in Mexico and are highly varied. In Mexico, Day of the Dead is mainly a family affair. The focus is on communal sharing of food and homage paying to deceased ancestors through which family and social relationships are affirmed. Day of the Dead is celebrated in other predominantly Catholic regions of the world, including the Philippines, Trinidad, Croatia, Sweden, and the United States. So these are some images that we will be, uh, that are uh, representative of, of items, objects, and performance activities. Altars, sugar skulls, mar marigolds, skeletons, visits to cemeteries, parades, and we'll talk about each of those briefly as we continue. Next slide, please. Days of the Dead rituals include feasting, homage paying to spirits of the dead with costumes, mostly skeletons, cemetery visits, altars, skeletal imagery, costumes, masks, sugar skulls, as we saw, festival parades, music, and dance. This slide depicts ofrendas offerings at altars to honor departed family members that have passed. These altars are decorated with bright yellow marigolds, orange, and, and sometimes orange, flowers, photos of the departed, and the favorite foods and drinks of one being honored. Typically, um, ofrendas are constructed in the home, in homes, so there are personal ofrendas. They may, be, they may also be in public spaces, uh, and um, they are altars to uh, deceased family members. Shall we go to the, the next slide, please? Marigolds. Marigolds, flowers of the dead in Aztec culture, assist the dead on their way to the heavens. They are often uh, used to mark the path to the cemetery or a pathway to an altar and are said to attract souls toward the offering. So these are flowers of the dead, marigolds. Next slide, please. This ofrenda is uh, somewhat typical. Ofrendas are made from wood, paper, pottery, um, Sometimes they incorporate skulls, as you can see. Uh, we see watermelon in this, fruits, vegetables, and the Catholic cross is prominent. This is an example of what we call religious syncretism, a synthesis of pre-Christian 
or ancient indigenous and Christian or modern religious uh, beliefs and practices. So the indigenous people embraced Catholicism and incorporated Catholic iconography, Catholic symbols and images in the pre-Christian uh, activities and traditions. So we call this religious syncretism. Next slide, please. This ofrenda represents the number four, four, four layers, uh, four dimensions. And the number four is an important concept uh, that seems to be quite pervasive. Uh, it's, um, it's a Jungian, it's, it's really in the concept, in the terms of Jungian thinking, it seems to be uh, part of our collective unconscious, our collective consciousness, where so many elements of our universe are organized around the number four, four seasons, four directions, four life stages, uh, four elements, earth, air, fire, water. Uh, this, the, the layering in Aztec cos cosmology, um, four, the number four is evoked in the four year journey believed to have been taken through the four worlds of the underworld. So the universe was layered horizontally in layers and uh, people traveled downward to the underworld, the dangerous, the world of demons, spirits, uh, death, and um, of our emergence as we emerge out of uh, the earth to life. So this particular, uh, I, this particular altar uh, um, appears to represent those four stages and also the Catholic connection here with the crosses. Next slide, please. This is a home altar, which are found in homes throughout Latin America. Altars are not just um, part of the Day of the Dead celebrations. People particular, uh, typically maintain an altar year round in their homes, but they are special phenomena, special parts of the activities around Day of the Dead or the three days of the dead. This, include, this home altar uh, may include, and it's hard to see them, but I see flowers, incense, food, and other offerings to the deceased are also included on the altar. And this is from Totonac village uh, in Veracruz, Mexico. The table may be set up with flowers, fruits, skulls, pictures of the deceased, as we mentioned, Sometimes clothes and other personal objects belonging to the deceased are placed on or near the altar. Men, a sombrero, machete, serape, uh, a, a shoulder covering. Women, we, they may include woven belts, cloth, or an embroidered blouse. Next slide. This particular um, slide shows us contemporary uh, street art that is also incorporated into modern Day of the Dead celebrations. In the upper left, we see um, an altar that is, I believe it's probably in California, but communities throughout the United States and particularly in California have colorful rituals at cemeteries and on the streets around Day of the Dead. And that the particular altar is an interactive altar where people select uh, popsicle sticks and write the names of loved ones on the popsicle sticks and put them back in the, the box uh, where they're on display. So this is, has been set up at a cemetery in the United States to honor uh, dece the deceased members of the family and uh, to, to celebrate the Day of the Dead. On the bottom right is an altar surrounded by marigolds uh, and um, prominently displaying the skeleton. Uh, in the lower right, photos of the deceased 
and other paraphernalia and objects uh, associated with the holiday and the loved one. Okay, shall we, next slide please. Food offerings are collected and gathered, sometimes brought to the cemetery uh, and uh, placed at the cemetery uh, displays. Large cooking pots containing foods may be part of uh, the uh, ofrendas, part of the altar, uh, and they uh, will be on display and also eaten as part of the celebrations. These may include breads, water, sweets, fruits, milk, tamales, fruit pastries, enchiladas, coffee, and coffee um, are included on uh, as parts of the food. Incense burners and candles will also be uh, part of the display. Flowers, as we've mentioned, especially orange and yellow marigolds. Other flowers, magenta, coxcomb, gladiolas, and carnations are also prominent in Day of the Dead. Um, as is mentioned in the description here, um, other foods, rice, mole, pumpkin, and fruits of the season are also prominent. Shall we go to the next slide? Soft sweet breads with hints of anise and orange are also part of the Day of the Dead uh, rituals. Pain de morto, the bread of the dead. These breads, round loaves, as you can see in the upper right, are often decorated with dough shaped like bones and teardrops. And we can see a, uh, a loaf of bread in the lower center, uh, uh, in the bottom center of the, of the lower photo. And the cross again with candles. Um, it's really a, quite a pretty altar setting. Next slide, please. The graves, graves prepared for the return of spirits to dece of, uh, of deceased loved ones um, are marked by crosses. In this case, these are Mayan crosses. Um, people are setting up the grave sites of their deceased relatives. And in the Southwest United States, there are graveyards like this uh, and certainly throughout Mexico and other parts of Latin America. Um, the cemetery is also decorated in this case with pine and marigolds. Um, blue, white crosses are depict children, blue uh, and green crosses depict um, adult women um, and um, or adults generally and black um, are set for elderly members of the community. Um, and again, the graves are being prepared for the return of the spirits of the deceased. The cemeteries are part of the community and people return to them to meet up with their deceased ancestors, just as in the ancient uh, Celtic rituals associated with Samhain, people uh, encountered the, their deceased during the fall and winter season when they were traveling about, uh, about our uh, neighborhoods. And um, at this time of transition from late summer into winter is the time when the, the spirits are particularly um, around, they are about in the community. Next slide, slide, please. These are some photos of the cemeteries at night. We see some elaborate um, decorations, uh, candles, flowers. Family members visit the graves, sit and stay. They may stay all day, all day, well, late into the night, uh, sitting, socializing. Um, sharing stories and remembering 
their ancestors awaiting the spirits of the deceased. As you can see, uh, graves are very elaborately decorated for this particular occasion. Okay, shall we go to the next slide, please? We talked about skeletons, so we finally gotten to look at some skeleton uh, iconography. Uh, skeletons are popular icons in the uh, Day of the Dead festivals, especially in Mexico City, but really throughout Mexico. Um, and as we have reminded you, all of the festivals that we've mentioned uh, remind us to remember our ancestors. Skulls uh, pay homage to deceased ancestors, are evocative of death, um, and um, remind us to remember our ancestors. Um, in terms of the visual presentation, a lot of this is what is what we would classify as folk art. Um, it is handmade, made from objects around the house or um, around the garden. Uh, and people are creative and imaginative in how they depict these particular uh, objects. Next slide, please. Skulls are called calaveras, and both of these depict the skull, the face uh, um, covered with uh, paint, and the skull um, performing music to, uh, along with a woman. They pay homage, as I mentioned, to deceased ancestors, and they're sometimes made from sugar. So these are some images of, that are very popular and common in, uh, in the Latin American Day of the Dead communities. Next slide, please. Sugar skulls are made, mostly, most popular skulls are made of chocolate. These are vanilla. Um, the name of the deceased may be written on the forehead. And um, these skulls represent the merging of pre-Hispanic and Spanish, Spanish customs associated with molding of sugar into objects. Um, they're not edible, uh, but they are a, a very common in the uh, activities associated with Day of the Dead. So these are called sugar skulls. Oops. Okay, shall we do the next slide, please? Jose Guadalupe Posada was a Mexican printmaker, often did political printmaking, a political, politically informed printmaking. And he produced the original La Calavara Katrina which you see on the right. Um, he is standing on the left. This is a photo depicted in about 1910. And this skull of Calavera de la Catrina became an iconic photo, an iconic image um, in the Day of the Dead act ceremonies and rituals and performance activities uh, in Mexico in particular. Um, as you can see, she was depicted as a glamorous female skeleton who cavorted with the dandy, as we will see in a minute. But her uh, hat, she has a very elaborate hat, and, and many of the images we've already seen of the skull, of the skeleton, had elaborate head coverings. <laughs> Shall we move to the next slide? These are some other images produced um, by uh, Posada. He depicts himself in the, in the rendering on the right, uh, on the, uh, to the right of um, the skull, the skeleton. 
Again, we see the elaborate hat. She's obviously a skeleton, uh, but she's among the living. On the left, we see the alcoholic Calavera. Um, and it's not known exactly when that one was produced, but it's a very typical celebrant, the dandy. He may be the dandy, having a drink, celebrating um, Die de los Muertos. Next slide. Why Katrina? As we can see in this photo, these uh, impersonators of Katrina are very fanciful, fancily dressed, uh, beautiful um, skeletons. And the, at the top of the uh, photo is a quote from a curator, David de la Torre. And I think it was, it's, um, it captures the why women and men are uh, depicted in this particular way. Katrina has come to symbolize not only El Dia de los Muertos and the Mexican willingness to laugh at death itself, but originally Katrina was an elegant or well-dressed woman. So it refers to rich people. Death brings this neutralizing force. Everyone is equal in the end. Sometimes people have to be reminded. So again, the universal experience of death that we all must experience uh, is, is embedded in the performance of Day of the Dead. Skeletons are images of death carried in processions throughout the streets. They ride, they prance, they celebrate their return to the living. So this particular portrait was inspired by Posada's image of Katrina. Next slide, please. These are some more, uh, this was in some more images of uh, the skull, the skeleton. And this is a modern piece produced in about 2016 uh, from a gallery, uh, the um, National Museum of Mexican Art in Chicago. A lady can, uh, candle holder, and we see the fancy lady at the top with her hat, her fancy hat and other skeleton uh, skull images, uh, flowers and uh, different, uh, different plants. Again, this particular uh, piece uh, evokes the same kind of feelings and thoughts associated with Day of the Dead. It's made from ceramic as a ceramic piece. Fancy lady candle holder. Next, please. These are some uh, other images produced by Posada um, evoking the uh, celebratory nature of Day of the Dead, uh, the cavorting and the uh, dancing of the, of the skeleton couple in the lower right, uh, the, the holiday uh, sentiments around this particular uh, celebration. So this is um, street art is what we might call it, street art. Next, please. Street theater, the dance of the street, activities on the street are other important, very important parts of Day of the Dead ceremonies. Parades are ubiquitous throughout Mexico uh, and um, other uh, Catholic communities in, uh, in uh, Mesoamerica and they find their way into uh, Spanish speaking communities in Arizona, New Mexico, California, even Portland, Oregon. So these festivals bring people out to the street, very elaborately dressed 
uh, in beautiful costumes. We see the dandy, we see Katrina. Um, that is the image that is very pervasive during this particular uh, celebration. Can we go to the next slide? Here are some other images uh, incorporating the skeleton, the skulls, um, marigolds, people carry marigolds, they dress in their uh, native dress. Um, so these holidays really have brought the creative spirit onto the streets uh, in the performance of celebration. I think these are rather typical of uh, images of uh, celebrants, uh, marching, parading, dancing on the streets of uh, Mexican villages. So last slide, please. So hopefully when you celebrate Halloween, you will realize and remember the rich heritage of our indigenous prehistoric ancestors whose memories are invoked uh, throughout the world in these prehistoric Day of the Dead and Halloween rituals. I hope that it will help you to enrich your thinking about um, the folk activities, the, the life of members of folk communities and how their uh, culture has very deep roots in our ancient history. And it's found its way all the way to the 21st century as we continue to enjoy um, Halloween today and the Day of the Dead in many communities throughout the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandy. That was wonderful, very interesting. And I'm sure many like me were just fascinated by those pictures and the artistry behind the costumes. Uh, now is the time for people to ask questions. If they have questions for Sandy, they can go ahead and ask them now or put it in a chat and I will, um, I will ask it if they want to do it that way. But um, any questions for Sandy? Um, I see Charlotte has a question. Yes. Yeah, Sandy, I was thinking early on when you were talking that the dates, you know, November, they're all um, Northern Hemisphere dates. Yes. Right. And I wonder if there's any kind of Southern Hemisphere equivalent. I, I, I think it might be outside the scope of what you prepared for. And I'm just curious, you'd think that it'd be a universal thing. Most of us keep our own funny little way altars of our own family members, even if they're not attached to part of the calendar. Yes. And the, these are predominantly in the southern, Northern Hemisphere. Um, but in other prehistoric indigenous communities, the seasonal changes did also give rise to uh, rituals and celebrations associated with birth uh, and death. So, so the springtime in the in the northern hemisphere is the fall in the southern hemisphere, and though it would be at that time that um, practices associated with um, the harvest and the coming of winter would uh, would emerge. Um, but some of these Day of the Dead ceremonies are, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what countries in the Southern Hemisphere, the Philippines, it's, it's practiced in the Philippines, but um, uh, I'm not sure of other world regions. There are a couple of countries in parts of Africa that also uh, have embraced Day of the Dead ceremonies. And I think some of them were brought in the context of the Catholic religious calendar, All Saints Day and All Souls Day, um, and piggybacked on those holidays were the more ancient 
rituals and ceremonies and celebrations associated with Day of the Dead. Um, but yes, and the, these emerged, I talked about the Northern Hemisphere, Celts, uh, the Norse um, also had fall and winter uh, celebrations and uh, holidays. But that, but it is, it, it's sort of the reverse. I think the universal theme is that in all of these prehistoric cultures, people celebrated um, and paid homage to the transitions, rites of passage um, in life and in nature um, seasonally. And they, the winter, and fall and winter and the emergence of the short shortening days of the year evoked that sense of death, danger, the underworld, um, the mystery of darkness and so forth. So we do see the universal themes globally. We did have another question and it's something that I was thinking myself which is why aren't the sugar skulls edible? <laughs> oh, well, I think it's mainly because it's they're rock hard. Um, and I, this particular um, molding activity is found in Spain um, and was brought to the Western hemisphere. Uh, and um, we don't really know uh, I don't really know why they're not exactly edible, but it seems that they're so rock hard. Uh, they're almost, it's almost like cement. And uh, I suppose if you put it in water, it would melt. And, but it's probably been sitting around for six months <laughs> waiting for the day of the dead ceremony. So that, I mean, they, they, they're made of sugar. They are made of sugar. Uh, but generally they're not eaten. They're just looked at and they are used to adorn the altars and uh, as part of the paraphernalia of the holiday. And we have uh, Maribel, Joni's niece, to thank for that question. Thank you, Maribel. Oh, good. I knew somebody would probably wonder whether they're edible. Um, Any other questions for Sandy? Yeah. Uh, Sandy, Paul, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? Nice presentation, by the way. Yes. Thank you very much for doing that. I really enjoyed it. Sandy, this celebration that they had, it, it, it had initially, until the Catholic Church came in and tried to convert everybody, okay, it had no supreme being or godlike thing other than these people's spirits returning or visiting or whatever. Right. What, I mean, is that, is that, I, mean I, I don't want to call it pagan, because that, but I guess it might be. Well, they, classified. yeah. Pagans is what is the term that was assigned to them. And pagan in Latin means rural dweller, right. country, country dweller. Country dweller, yeah. And eventually it um, was attached to people who did not subscribe to monotheism, to the belief in one God. These were people that were polytheistic. They believed in many gods and deities or in forces, supernatural forces related to magical thinking, to magic and rituals associated with magic, that there's power out there in the supernatural that can be harnessed by the living. Druids, priests, Druid priests um, were the mediators between the living and the supernatural realm. So they, but they didn't believe in a single God. That no, was I within yeah. I understand that. The other thing that I find interesting, and I suppose you have too along the way, is that there is a sense of something other than, it doesn't have to be a monotheistic thing, right. but there's a sense of life and death and, a, and a, a hereafter in all of those cultures, no matter where they come from. I mean, here we look at a Latino culture right. with the Day of the Dead, and even that day itself isn't really a religious thing as much as it is an homage thing to pay right. to the people who predeceased them. You know, they kind of bumped it up a day or the church bumped it up a day to remember someone else. But even in the Druids, they had a similar thing too that wasn't really a religious thing as much as it was a spiritual connection right. between right. people. Yeah, it was a belief system as yeah. is, is a religion. And it's, 
Yes, and, and many of the beliefs um, were carried forward into Christianity. Yeah. Um, Judaism. I mean, beliefs that, th th that there is an afterlife or that we can communicate with the deceased, that the spirits of the deceased are among us and inhabit our, our universe um, and um, beliefs that there are supernatural powers mm. out there that affect us and we can tap into. Catholic salesmanship in order to get these people on board. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. So the Catholic, right. The Catholic Church was very resourceful in encouraging, you know, they didn't simply try to kill them all off. They actually tried to entice them to Christianity yeah. by moving the, the holiday uh, in the Christian calendar to a, to a time of the year, a day, when the, the Celts were already celebrating this, this, these religious festivals linked link to the spirits of their dead ancestors. Yeah, really. Thanks again, Sandy. I'll see you soon. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, you should make one of those candelabras. I want to see that. <laughs> well, no, that's going to take some work for sure. Yeah, I so. <laughs> I'll, have that. I'll have to think about that. Okay. Thank, thank you, Paul. Thanks, and and Paul is is one of our potters also. So he he and Sandy can both collaborate on making one of those clay candelabras. Right. Any other questions for Sandy? Questions for Sandy? Now's your chance. Day of the Dead. I know we've all really uh, gotten into the Halloween spirit with this talk, and so. Sandy, I thank you so much for, for bringing us this incredibly interesting talk. And um, I know we all want to give a, a virtual round of applause for Sandy and the talk. And it was really terrific. Um, I'm looking to see if there are any last minute questions, but I don't see I any. So, and as I mentioned in the last slide, I hope that it will sort of enrich your enjoyment of Halloween and broaden your thinking about uh, the connections. I know it definitely did for me. So thank you so much, Sandy. And thank you all for coming tonight. And we will see you soon, hopefully in, in person or virtually. We've got a lot going on at the Art Center and we thank you all for participating and come see our mask exhibit. Sandy has a wonderful one, as do many of the people participating in this call. So thank you all, and we will see you soon. Thank bye you, bye. Sandy. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Now. Bye bye. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you, Sandy. Thanks. Bye now. Bye bye. Hi, Laura. Hi, Liz. Thank you um, for coming. I was um, just couldn't figure out how to ask a question very well. But oh, that's I'm fine. sorry. You had a question. <laughs> no, worries. no worries. At least I can talk to you. <laughs> okay. All so right. The question was, I think they make chocolate calderas um, or skulls, chocolate skulls. She did mention treat. about things uh, in that there were some chocolate. Um, oh, I must have uh, missed that. One. Um, and the other thing I didn't know if you happen to know on this, the cemeteries, did they actually go to a real cemetery or are those, um, those Aztec crosses or Mayan crosses, I forget, that they set up? Was that like a, just a piece of uh, land that they set up for the celebration or did they go to the cemeteries and use the graves in the cemetery? And my understanding was those were actual cemeteries. But okay, and I can, that's what I, can, I thought. I can I pass those them. questions on as well. Yeah, so thank you. Again, thank you so much and have a great night. See you all soon, I hope. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.